Hey folks, welcome back to another tutorial, and this time I'm taking a little break from the conversion work and showing you how to paint the slightly textured and weathered nature of this red power armor, perfect for your blood angels. I should also note that the only items you'll need for this tutorial are some acrylic paints, a little thinner or medium, and regular brushes. There are no airbrushes needed for this guide. Priming is always your first port of call when painting your model, and whilst the method doesn't matter so much, the colour does. You will need to go for a black primer, as this will basically give us a good starting point for our darker shadows. Normally, black can be a bit tricky to paint over with such bright colours, but the paints I'm using all have really high pigmentation, which will help to resolve this issue. And plus, we're building them up slowly, which means we don't have to worry about applying a single thick coat of paint. So, one of the things I really struggle with is picking the points of the model that I should paint lighter to recreate the effect of light falling on a model. Getting those reflections and shadows just right really helps to add to the effectiveness of the finished piece, so it's a very important step. Luckily, you can just cheat. No need to study how diffuse and specular lighting works here, simply take your prime model and place them beneath a light source before taking a picture of them from several angles, making sure that the light source remains in the same position relative to the model each time. Once you are done, you are left with a series of images that you can use for reference points. For example, with the model that I have here under this light, you can see various points of the model that are slightly less black because the light is reflecting from them. It's these points that we want to add our lightest paints to. By taking these photos, we ensure that the angle of light remains consistent across the model regardless of the light source you use for painting. So, once you have your reference photos, we can begin to start with the painting. So, to give us a slightly lighter and slightly warmer base colour to work from, rather than the black primer, we want to create a greyish brown colour. Now, I'm using two Vallejo paints for this step, but I will also include some uh, Games Workshop alternatives in the description below. So, the paints I'll be using are flat brown and black grey. Now, combining these two paints will result in a paint that is slightly more desaturated and darker than if we just use flat brown on its own. Recreating the exact colour I'm using here with the same paints isn't really important though because we'll mostly be painting over this in later steps. What is important, however, that you, you make sure that the paint is adequately thinned. I'm using an airbrush thinner here as I find that it works really well with Vallejo paints, but you can use water or mediums or whatever you prefer to use. Now, this um, mixture once created, we're going to be applying it over our power armor. You don't need to worry about being particularly neat here, as you can leave some of the deeper recesses as black. Just make sure the armor is mostly covered over the more visible parts. Once the whole armor is covered, you'll be left with a much smoother, creamier and much chocolatey base coat to apply our reds to. Before we can even glance at our red paints, we first need to mark out our areas of reflection on our armor, which involves using a very light tan color such as dark sand. We'll be thinning this out with just a little medium. The choice is yours here again. And you want to create something that still has that slight stickiness to it. If it's too runny, we won't be able to create our texture. So using a brush dipped into this mixture, we want to begin stippling the paint over the armor using our earlier photos as reference points, applying the paint and the parts that appear to be the lightest. This stippling is not only quick and easy to do, but it'll also create a slight patina or texture to our surface, which ultimately will give us a more detailed and realistic paint finish. Apply the stippled dots as small or as large as you like. Small dots look more detailed than large ones, but generally take longer to apply. Also, you can use a older or more frayed brush for this, as you don't need to be particularly neat. You just want to get the nice stippling. Once your first layer is applied, you can begin to apply some more spread out and smaller dots around the edges. Towards the center of the light patches you just created, focus the dots more densely. The combination of these essentially creates a very rough gradient of light paint moving into the darker parts of the armor in those recessed areas. So at this stage, your marine should look like it's been painted by a three-year-old with some terrible poster paints. You're probably thinking this is just some long overdue April Fool's joke, but bear with me because in the infamous words of Dream, things can only get better. So. Take some gory red or similar deep red colour and thin it down in much the same way as we did in the last step. Then, using that same stippling technique, apply this paint to the entirety of your armour, covering over the dark sand from before, as well as the brown parts as well. You will find that the stippling, combined with the slight thinning, causes the paint to be more little translucent, meaning that we retain the texture and the lighter areas are marked out in the last step, 
whilst giving it a red coloration. So to continue this over the whole armor, but leave some of those deeper recesses alone, as this will start to create the shading we saw on the finished armor. The next step involves using some of that stippling technique, but with the brighter, richer color of bloody red. However, instead of applying this over the whole armor, we are instead going to be a little more picky with our application. Focus the stippling here over the same areas that we applied the dark sand earlier on. With a slightly brighter red behind it, this bloody red will look much more intense than if we'd applied it without that dark sand. It also helps because we can see exactly where we need to apply this brighter red without having to look back at our reference photos. It just saves a little bit of time. So what we're doing here is essentially creating the actual color of the armor. The darker reds from last time are in fact the areas of shadow and the subsequent steps are all reflections of light. However, by limiting our application to specific areas, we'll create much more contrasting and somewhat more realistic color scheme. As I touched on in the last step, this next layer is all about the creation of reflections and we kind of have a couple of directions we can take here. We can start to mix in light greys and white swell reds, which will result in a more faded and worn red, or we can really boost the intensity of the reds and switch over to using some oranges, which is exactly what I'll be doing here. So using some hot orange, stipple over those blood red areas, but don't cover them entirely. Narrow your application so that you only apply this paint towards the top sections, and you can also use this paint to begin some edge highlighting. Again, only focus on those upper edges where you would expect the light to fall. Next up, we need to create a brighter, much more intense orange by mixing our previous hot orange with a bright yellow, such as Uriel yellow. Use this particular paint much like you did before, but apply it even more sparingly than the last time, limiting your application to the shoulder pads, power pack, gorgets, raised arms, and knee pads. You can also use this to mark out any corners or center points on the edges that you've already highlighted. Finally, some small dots of that pure yellow can be used to add some intense spots of light. If you really wanted to go for a more glossy appearance, you could instead use a light gray such as ghost gray or administratum gray. So here we have our completed armor color, but we can improve on it. The stippling created a slightly more worn and weathered appearance, which we can continue further by applying some chips dents and scratches. In order to get the best contrast against the brighter reds, use a pure black paint to apply a few thin lines over areas you would expect to see the most damage occurring. These areas include the lower legs, shoulders, hands and chest area. To give these chips and dents a 3D appearance, we'll then be using some of our previously used paints to create small thin lines directly beneath the black line. This will give us a effect of light shining on the edge of a small pit or dent in the armor. The color you choose here will be based entirely on the color you're painting over. The color you choose should be one later than the color you paint over. So if you paint over the gory red parts, use bloody red. If you're painting over bloody red, use hot orange and so on. Using paints two steps later will make these stand out much more and really is entirely up to you. Also, don't go too crazy here. Apply a few lines to see how they look before applying more. There's nothing worse than applying far too much damage and just regretting it later on. So whilst you have your black paint to hand, apply some thin lines of pure black into some of the more defined recesses of the armor. Having these pure black shadows will create a much more defined and detailed looking armor, as well as helping to boost that contrast between the lighter and the darker parts of the miniature. So what we have here is the finished red arm, and this is pretty much where the tutorial finishes. I only want to focus on the armor here. And what's left to do now is to paint the rest of the model and then to give everything a coat of matte varnish to remove that slightly glossy sheen that I've created by using thinners. So however, I would recommend doing this after you've painted everything else, just to make sure everything has that nice matte appearance. So once everything else has been painted and varnished, you will have a miniature that hopefully looks something like this. And again, you can see exactly how the armor looks against different kind of materials, such as the metallics and skin tones on the face. Now I should point out that this is all, it's still kind of a new technique for me. And there are a few things that I learn each time I've tried it out. For example, if I were to tackle the scheme again, I probably would have stippled on some areas of dark brown or black to create a shading counterpoint to the brighter spots. So. If you give this technique a try and you struggle with it or you're just not happy with the results, then just keep trying. Every time you try something new, you learn a little through what does and doesn't go well. So just keep at it and don't get disheartened. 
Now, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see me take on different colors in a similar style, then let me know. I've always felt that there's a little discrepancy between how grim and gritty the lore and artwork of 40k is, compared to how many of the official paint schemes are presented. For example, Space Marine miniatures are always painted as being the clean, pristine paragons of humanity that the Imperial propaganda machine presents them as, but this shouldn't always be the case. These guys are often fighting in the most hostile battlefields in the galaxy for extended periods of time. Their armor is well maintained outside of campaigns, but when the boots are on the ground, that paintwork isn't going to stay factory fresh for very long. So hopefully that's something that I've helped to address in this video. Now before I go, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Your help with the cost of producing these videos really allows me to experiment more and try out things like this tutorial. If you don't currently support me, but you would like to lend me a hand, then I've included my Patreon page in the description below. Or if you'd like to just make a one-time donation, I also have a PayPal link there too. And for anyone looking to chat about all things wargaming with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.